Hey guys, it's Alex from Chelsea Fan TV. I hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, welcome to another video. We are talking about something a little bit different today. Uh, Frank Lampard recently, in the last sort of 24, 48 hours, uh, went on a podcast with Stephen Bartlett, who's a very well-known British entrepreneur. Uh, who has a podcast called The Diary of a CEO. So if you don't know that podcast, uh, very, very well known, very successful. Uh, he basically gets on different guests and talks about their life, their stories, um, and just many different things, their careers. And Frank Lampard decided to come on and he had a few things to say, uh, you know, both personal and professional. Uh, but we're not going to touch too much on what he said personally. We want to know what he said based on Chelsea. And I want to react to that, give you my thoughts. And I want to see what you guys think as well, whether you agree with him. So let's start off. Um, he said there were too many players in the squad last season. And he specifically highlighted there were too many international players. So the exact number he said, he said, well... You want to have about 15 players in your core squad. You obviously, you have your starting 11 and then a couple of subs that you might use regularly. And then on top of that, maybe one or two older players and some younger players as well who you know really want to be enthusiastic. They're just happy to be there. Uh, but when you're working with 30, 32 players, it's impossible. And uh, I have to agree with Frank on that one. I, I felt so sorry for him walking into the job. Um, how could you turn it down? How how could you turn down a job like that? I mean, he loves Chelsea so much. And he was asked, why would you take the job? Looking back at it now, if you would have known that you would have had to deal with the problems that you did have to deal with, would you have still taken the job? And, you know, Frank basically said he probably still would have taken it because he wanted to take on the challenge and obviously he loves Chelsea so much. Um, you know, when he was asked about whether he actually enjoyed his time, even though it was only a couple of games, I think it was 10, 12 games, uh, you know, he, he was there. It wasn't a long period. He said for the first couple of weeks he did, and then after that, spirits did drop. Because the reality is when you have players that don't want to be there, it's very difficult to motivate them. So he was speaking about how how, how do you motivate a player who's got four games left to play for Chelsea and you know that his head's somewhere else. He doesn't want to be there. You can't have a magic wand to make things happen. Um, and, you know, he's right. He's right. We just had so many players, so many Deadwood players. I mean, you've got to recognise as well that the, the way we got rid of players so quickly as well so far this summer, just to name a few, obviously, uh, Kovacic, Koulibaly, Mendy, Lukaku wants to go, Hudson Odoi wants to go. I've missed out a couple of others, I can't remember. Um, but these players wanted to go early. That's a significant reason why these deals were able to get done so quickly. They just wanted to be anywhere else other than Chelsea. Um, so yeah, you really have to feel for Frank in that sense. How was? How do you coach players that don't really want to be coached? Uh, and that brings me to my next point where... He says the standards were not high enough last season. Uh, it wasn't like the sessions were terrible, but they weren't elite. So what he was saying is that, you know, it, from the outside, it looked like everything would have absolutely been terrible, right? Training sessions would have been just crap, dire, no intensity. And Frank basically dismissed that. And he said, well, it's not like it was terrible, but it wasn't good enough. You know, that when you are a top team, when you are an elite team challenging for titles in the past, like we have done over the past 20 years, there's a standard that's expected. And what he was speaking about is back when he was playing with Terry, Drogba, Ashley Cole, Petr Cech, you know, they didn't have to talk about standards. This is just what you did. But it seems like in this team that we had last season, players just didn't rise to that standard. And that, and that's why he was bringing it up so much in press conferences. You know, he felt like he was repeating himself every week because at the end of the day, how are you supposed to build on things tactically, mentally, if you don't even have the basics there? Um, so it all comes back down to effort. And I think that's, well, that's obviously why Chelsea haven't done well. But the problem is that because we had such a big squad, 
you know, players that weren't playing, they didn't feel like they would get a chance. And the players that were playing regularly, they didn't have any competition. So what he was doing is taking uh, his starting 11 for the next game and then telling the other 18 players to go on another pitch. So you've got 18 players that are unhappy and 11 players that are playing and they're just comfortable. Um, obviously not every single one of them, but you get my point. So how do you keep a, a squad of that size happy? The answer is you can't. You you just can't. Um, what else? He also touched on the owners, Bolieg, Bali, uh, Clear Lake, and he said that they have good intentions and they want to make Chelsea the best team in the world or one of the best teams in the world. And uh, obviously, judging by the results we've seen, a lot of fans doubt that. But I think the majority of Chelsea fans can be pretty happy with what we've done under Boli and Egbali regarding transfers. The intention has always been good. Now, everyone has their own opinion on this, right? I can completely understand why people think, well, maybe they're just trying to increase the value of the club so that in 10 years' time they can sell it. And... <laughs> That might be true. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say that I know what the owners are thinking. Obviously, I don't. But they're very hands-on. They want to be involved. And they want to be a part of the club. And have a good relationship with the fans. Let's not forget the whole stake uh, sponsorship um, embargo. People seem to have forgotten that already. I've seen people in my group chats, my Chelsea group chats, saying, you know, the owners are clowns. Because they haven't got a sponsorship deal done. They could have easily signed with stake. They chose not to do that. Because they don't want to have a bad relationship with the fans. So if you ask me. I think that is a very very positive thing to see from your owners. Because they are sacrificing the one thing everyone says they care about. Which is money. For the relationship with the fans. So I do think we need to bring that into context. But that has nothing to do with um, what Frank said. Moving on. Um, what else did he say? Even if I used different tactics, if I'd have changed things, the results would have still been similar. Lots of players did not want to be there. Um, he didn't say lots of players did not want to be there, but that's what it sounded like he was saying. Uh, so yeah, he was looking at it. He was saying basically, I could, you know, I could have maybe said something different to this player. I could have changed the tactics for this game, but. Ultimately, the results wouldn't have changed, and I have to agree with Frank on that again. I mean, uh, the squad was so poor, and uh, the fitness levels were really not good enough. So, whatever you do, was that really going to make much of a difference? I mean, the fine margins at the top level are, are so small, but they make such a big difference. But who cares about fine margins when the basics aren't there? And just to finish off, guys... He also touched on Mason Mount and he said Mason Mount will be a top player at Man United. And he was basically going on speaking about what it's like to manage a player like Mason Mount and how he, he, he did whatever you asked him to do. He did what he, you needed him to do. And that is why he's going to be a top player at Man United. He wasn't really clear on why Mount would have left Chelsea, but look, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. I think we've all got uh, we've all said our piece on Mason Mount, but I mean, judging from the the, the first game he did in in uh, preseason with Man United, that did not look great. That did not look great. But listen, that's, let, let's take that with a pinch of salt. I think we're going to have to judge him based on what we see in the Premier League and obviously the European competitions as well. Um, but yeah, ultimately, just to summarise what Frank was saying. He basically said that whatever he would have done, he thinks the results would have still been similar. He thinks that the owners are doing a good job and they really do want the best for Chelsea. Mason Mount will be a success in his opinion at Man United. And ultimately, you can't manage a squad of more than 30 players. It's just not sustainable. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you agree with what Frank's saying? Do you think... Maybe he's just been a little bit lenient because he wasn't particularly critical of the players, if I'm being honest with you, apart from the standards. He didn't single them out. Uh, so is he being too lenient or um, is, is there something else that we don't know? So, yeah, let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe and uh, wishing you all of the best.